Hi everyone, uh, welcome again to the, the course on uh, social network analysis and we are continuing our discussion on uh, community structure and today we will uh, try to wrap up this chapter uh, by discussing some of the other algorithms, uh, some of them are recent and uh, we'll also discuss some of the metrics that we use for community evaluation. Okay, this is the plan. So, uh, so far we have, uh, we have been discussing about, uh, uh, you know, what is community, why it is important, uh, what are the different types of community structures. We discussed about decision community. We, uh, we last lecture, we have also discussed uh, one of the very old algorithms uh, called uh, clique percolation method for overlapping community detection, right? Uh, today we will discuss two other algorithms. Uh, one is an extension of uh, the previous, uh, you know, the metric that we discussed in decision community detection, and other is a, you know, a completely new notion of community detection for overlapping communities. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, let's start with a new definition of community or new metric to define an overlapping community called generalized permanence. So permanence metric we have discussed earlier uh, for this joint community. And I hope you remember the formula. It was permanence of a particular what is V. It was a local uh, local community, uh, I mean, local community centric metric because you can measure permanence for every vertex. So it was in degree of V by E max uh, of V and it was normalized by one by degree of V minus one minus intern clustering coefficient of V, right? And we discussed two uh, quantities. One was the pool, internal pool uh, of, uh, of a vertex that, I mean, internal pool that a vertex is experiencing from its own community and other was the uh, external pool, right? So th this was kind of a internal connection and uh, this was external pool and this was internal pool, right? And we assume that the community structure is a decision community structure. Now, how do we how do we generalize it for a, for an overlapping structure, right? For an overlapping uh, community structure, generalized in the sense that the metric that we will discuss today uh, is uh, applicable for both disjoint and overlapping communities. Meaning, if the community structure is disjoint, you can also uh, use that metric and that metric basically in the uh, you know region community for the region community structure the metric that we will discuss today would basically uh, lead to this metric okay but for the overlapping community structure you use uh, the, the, that metric separately okay so before that let's try to understand a uh, few concepts okay simple idea so every age when you talk about the overlapping community it may happen that a particular age okay shares two communities right for example you see here the age vc right this age shares two communities one is this community and the, the green community two community whereas this age shares only one community now when i say that an age shares multiple communities meaning that the end points the end point the end vertices of that age belong to multiple community and those communities are actually same. Some of them are shared, right? For example, you see V belongs to community one, community C, C also belongs to community one, community C. Therefore, I say that this age is a shared age, right? Between two communities. Whereas uh, in, in case of this age, although the node V shares both the communities, right? But F shares only one community. Therefore, this is not a shared age. This is, this is a, dedicated age for this community for, for for the green community okay now why this is this this concept of this, this sharing concept is needed because when we now say let's assume that you want to measure uh, you know the internal pool or the external pool or the clustering coefficient etc right so when we consider this age for uh, this particular node for example and you consider say this age Right, and so, so for example, say you want to measure the permanence of this vertex, right, within this green community, right? So you will take into consideration this edge, right? Because this is kind of an internal edge. So this edge will contribute to the, to the measure of IV, right? Contribute to the measure of C in V, 
okay this edge so uh, but but remember this edge is now a shared edge meaning that this edge will be considered for this community and for this community as well when we measure the permanence of vertex v for uh, with respect to community 1 you consider this edge when you measure the permanence of vertex v with respect to community 2 you will also consider this edge so you are essentially considering a particular edge two times when when it gets shared uh, with two communities right so so basically you are double counting it right? so to to address this problem right we will define something so that we will not double count uh, those edges Uh, which are shared okay so uh, right so again the concept of generalized permanence is same we basically try to look at internal pool uh, external pool and clustering coefficient three factors right but the internal pool is now not the, the internal pool iv may not be completely internal why because there may be some edges which contribute to the internal pool but those edges are shared across two communities across multiple communities right so so if we just look at if we just count the number of internal edges that may not be enough okay similarly when we when we measure clustering coefficient the clustering coefficient also may not be may not be completely uh, dedicated to the community because it may also happen that um, the edges which are which are being taken into account uh, for clustering coefficient comp uh, computation Right, some of them are part of multiple communities. Okay, so how do we address this problem? So in order to address this problem, we define a quantity called the internal pool of a vertex from a particular community C. Right, because a vertex V can belong to multiple communities, the overlapping community. So we define the internal pool with respect to a particular community. Now, how do we do that? so what we do we first look at so this you see this gamma vc right gamma vc it basically indicates the set of edges of uh, node v that are in community c meaning that um, that um, say this is right say this is v and you have this kind of structure right okay so say so this is community c right so gamma vc will have say so this is a b c d right so gamma vc so this is c this is c dash gamma vc will have edges uh, vb right ba and vc right vd will not be there because vd is a part of uh, community uh, c dash okay so these are three edges connected with v and part of c okay these are edges which are connected to v and part of c okay now this is your gamma vc now let's take one such edge e right now what is 1 by xc we xc is the number of uh, communities where the edge is shared in which the uh, edge is shared for example when we take vb as an uh, when we take vb as e right so xe would be one because because vb is a part of only one community right va when we take va xe would be two right because va is a part of two communities and vc would be one right so now the internal pool of vertex b with respect to community c would be 1 by 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 1 right so 2.5 if if va were were in class in in, in uh, only in community c then it would have been just 3 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1 by 1 right so think about it if if it's a disjoint community then icb boils down to sim simply iv okay so this is your internal clustering coefficient when we take into account the shared edges right similarly when we uh, measure the so so let's look at the modified definition okay so uh, e max v will remain same degree v will remain same 
now instead of taking iv i am taking icv and icv is calculated using this formula okay simple now the remaining part so this part is same one minus c in v with respect to a particular community c but c in v the clustering coefficient is not completely uh, completely um, you know dedicated to the particular community right so so therefore what proportion of the clustering coefficient is dedicated to community c this is basically the proportion would be icv by iv meaning total number of internal edges and how many what what uh, uh, how many of them are part of community c so instead of taking the clustering coefficient internal clustering coefficient totally what we take we take the clustering coefficient a portion of it and the uh, and and the proportion of the clustering coefficient is icv by iv right so this this number would be between between uh, 0 to 1 right so we will not take the i mean we will take the clustering complete clustering coefficient when icv and iv will be same when this and this would be one therefore this ratio would be one sorry uh, when these and these would be same and the ratio would be one then we take the cluster complete clustering coefficient and when some of the edges are shared across multiple communities the numerator would be less than uh, less than the denominator therefore this value would be less than one right therefore we take a portion uh, of clustering coefficient into account in the uh, in the formulation okay so let's let's now look at the permanence calculation so permanence of a vertex v with respect to community c1 you see right in community c1 these three edges are there and all these three edges are um, dedicated so you have 1 plus 1 plus 1 right internal internal edge and external uh, max external pool is to, max max external pool is uh, uh, i think there is a problem here max external pool should be 3 right because we have 3 here we have 3 here uh, oh no no right it's is okay because because when we take um, max external pool right we take those communities where the vertex is not a part of right so for vertex v vertex v is a part of c1 and c3 but not c2 so it has only one external community which is c2 right therefore two so 2 into 8 8 is the degree now clustering coefficient is 1 by 2 1 minus 2 by 3 because you have now uh, you know three internal vertices among them two are connected right so therefore 2 by 3 and this is the proportion okay similarly for this now the beauty of this formula is that if you if you take the sum right if we um, if we take the sum of um, um yeah if we if we if we take the sum of permanence of uh, particular vertex v in a in a, in a given given graph g it would basically be uh, you know it is basically be all the communities where the particular node belongs to right um say this is um, you know uh, b or v this is this, this you know the number of this this you know the set of communities where the particular node belongs to right and you have p and, and and you measure p of c v right you take the sum sum of this value okay so this is the formula and then we uh, uh, and in 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 a similar way uh, the the algorithm that i mentioned earlier uh, max perm algorithm right we basically repeat the same thing again but here when we uh, when we uh, check the you know uh, you remember the, the, there was one step where we look at uh, whether a particular vertex belongs to this community or this community or this community we take the max right and so on and so forth so instead of taking the max what you can do here um, you can you can basically uh, you know uh, take a threshold and you can say that okay i will assign the community uh, that, that that vertex to those communities where the permanence value is greater than certain threshold okay so you can adjust your algorithm accordingly so that a vertex can belong to now multiple communities okay so now this is this is simple right so now we uh, discuss uh, 
another algorithm which uh, which we uh, which is little bit different from the traditional way of uh, detecting communities because in the traditional manner what we generally take we take um, the traditional algorithm what we take we take um, uh, a particular metric then we optimize the metric right and then we um, then during the optimization we basically at, at the end of the optimization we get the community structure but now what we discuss is something called a generative model okay now what is a generative model so idea behind generative model is that you have an underlying generative process okay now this underlying generative process is responsible for uh, creating a network structure okay so let's assume that you know the nodes you know the set of nodes but you do not know the edges right now these edges are formed the edges are the edges will be formed based on the generative process the generative process will control the edge formation right mechanism okay so and and uh, how, and how does the gener generative process work the generative process works based on whether the nodes um, how the nodes belong to communities okay so this is the idea so let's assume that uh, let's assume that uh, two nodes belong to so let's assume that you know the uh, you know the number of nodes you know the set of nodes and you also know which node belongs to which community you know the set of nodes please remember you you know the set of nodes and you also know you also know which node belongs to which community right? overlapping which node belongs to which communities okay now what is the task now the task is to create edges connect nodes so that you get the original network structure right so your community affiliation your community membership will drive the edge formation process okay so in a generative model again you try to generate the network right and your generated your generated network should be as close as the uh, as the original network structure right and while doing that you basically take into account the uh, the community affiliation okay the community affiliation of nodes uh, uh, in 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 different uh, groups this is the idea okay so let's uh, look at it um, let's assume that uh, let's assume that uh, uh, let's assume that you have um, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 11 12 12 nodes right and you have two communities community a and community b one is sky community a blue community or this green community okay so uh, and you also know that this set of nodes belong to community a and this set of nodes belong to community b assume that you know this information so you know the community membership information right and you see that this red set of nodes this set of nodes belong to both the communities a and b okay so you now define a generative model b which is defined by a set of basically a set of tuples right where v is a set of nodes that you know c is the set of communities that you know right m is the membership of nodes into communities you also know you know that which node belongs to which community so you can think of m you can think of m as a matrix where nodes are what is uh, sorry where rows are vertices and columns are communities right and each entry indicates whether a particular node belongs to this community or not right so m is a membership uh, membership matrix met, uh, mem membership matrix right and what is pc pc now look at this notation pc meaning pc is the probability of a particular community c it is associated with a community c it indicates that what is the probability that a particular node belongs to a particular community now this probability 
is same for all the nodes in a particular community meaning that that let's let's say pa is the community membership probability for for community a so it means that all the nodes all the nodes who are part of this community right the probability of all the nodes belonging to this community is pa this is this is probability same across the nodes it is not dependent on the node right please remember this similarly you have pb pb is uh, same again this is the same probability for community b so what are these these this factors we have set of vertices we we know set of communities we know community membership and we also know um, that uh, what is the probability of a node what is the probability of being a part of a community what is the probability of being a part of a community right so c is known right and let's assume that uh, and so, so in in real world setting you know v you do not know c you do not know am you do not know pc okay but let's assume that you have a generative model which knows all these things and which basically generates now this generative model is responsible for generating the network right what do you mean by generating the network i mean that this generative model will now start connecting nodes right through edges it will it, it, it will create edges now it will create edges it will keep creating edges and it will keep checking whether the edges which are being created are actually are are actually part of the real world uh, network or not right so if i see that the, the generative model says that okay node a and b should be connected right but in the real world uh, network right node node a and b are not connected that means it makes a mistake whereas if it says that we a and b is a and b are connected and the real world network also this is exist that mean uh, it it basically means that uh, it it is correct okay so whenever it uh, whenever it produces a wrong result a wrong edge it will penalize and whenever it produces correct edge edge it will reward it will get rewarded okay this is the idea so <clears throat> this notations are not coming here so this the the this uh, presentation slides i have taken from the author's presentation therefore there are some problems here no problem so so let's let's look at it now so so this is called community affiliation right you know the nodes right you know the communities and you also know which nodes belong to which community and you also know this pa and pp okay the generative process knows so therefore you see from from this structure you can you can get this structure because you know the nodes you know there is a community like this there is a community green community there is a, a blue community and there are some nodes which belong to both the community right now what's the task now the task is to connect these edges the the, the task is to connect these nodes okay and see whether this the connected nodes the uh, the resultant nodes are uh, the resultant edges are uh, actually correct or not right so now so he, here is the idea so the idea is the idea is the more a pair of nodes share multiple communities the higher the chance that these uh, nodes are connected that means say if a pair of users right belong to uh, you know uh, soccer fan club or belong to same university and belong to same music club it is highly likely that they would be connected so more the communities a pair of nodes share higher the chance that nodes will be connected less the communities that the nodes share lesser the chance that the nodes are not connected this is the hypothesis okay so each for each pair of nodes in community a we connect them with probability pa okay what i'm saying what i'm saying is we if a node if a pair of nodes are part of community a and we also know the probability of being a part of community a pa right we connect these two nodes with certain probability pa right now if the same pair of nodes say uv uh, uv uh, ub belong to community a so we connect them with probability pa 
Now say this also belongs to community B, we connect them with probability PB. If this belongs to C, we connect them with probability PC, right? And then we take the aggregation, right? We take the aggregation. Now higher this, uh, uh, higher the shared, uh, sorry, uh, I mean, uh, the more the shared communities, the higher the chance that they are connected, right? So the overall age probability between a pair of nodes U and V, the overall age probability between a pair of nodes U and V is this one. Okay, now let's look at the second part. So what is MU? You remember I said M is the uh, membership matrix. So M, MU is basically, what is MU? MU is a set of communities where the node U belongs to. The set of communities where the node U belongs to. What is MV? MV is a set of communities where the node V belongs to, right? So I take MU intersection MV, meaning those communities where both the node U, both the nodes U and V belong to, right? For every such shared community, for every such shared community C, right? What is the PC? PC is the probability that I should connect these two nodes because of the shared community C. Because of the shared community C, I would connect these two nodes U and V. This is a probability PC. What is one minus PC? One minus PC is the probability that I would not connect these two nodes, although they are part of the same community C. I would not connect these two nodes U and V, although they are part of the same community C. This is one minus PC, right? Now I take the product, I take the product, uh, uh, across all such communities where both node U and V belong to, right? It basically says, this product basically says that I am not connecting U and V despite the fact that U and V are, U and V share multiple community, right? So this is the combined probability that I am not connecting U and V, although they share, although they share uh, from, uh, you know, common community. They, they share community. What is y, one minus this entire quantity? One minus this entire quantity says that what is the probability that these two nodes are connected due to at least one shared community? This is this this is same as you know kind of or or kind of function, right? So this, this probability says, the right side probability says that I'm not connecting U and V, although they, are, they share communities. Now, when I say one minus this, it basically says that I am connecting U and V because they share at least one community. Now this, this, this part is, is basically, uh, you know, uh, same as the OR function where at least one community, if at least one community is yes, then we create an edge. Okay, now think about this formula. This is very crucial. Okay, so, so now we know this probability P of uh, UV. So we know that two nodes U and V are connected because they share uh, communities. Now think of multiple cases. Say, say node U and V share, node U and V share many communities. So the intersection would be a lot, right? So what, what, what would happen is that this PC, PC would be, uh, you know, we will we'll have many such quantities, right? Uh, one minus PC, one minus PC, one minus PC. So when we take the product, right? So th th this value ranges between zero to one. When you take the product, this, this keeps reducing, the value keeps decreasing, right? Therefore one minus that uh, small product will be high. Small number will be high, one minus small number. So the more the, com the nodes share communities, the lesser this number, and the higher the entire number, higher the entire p-value, probability value. Whereas the less this community shared, the less the nodes share community, the higher this value, therefore the lower the, the value of one minus this one, therefore the lower the value of the probability. Okay, so the idea is that the more, to, the more community to a pair of vertices shared, the higher the chance that the, the nodes will be connected. So I can measure, I, I can measure PAB right now. So 
now what i'm doing so 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 this is called um, affiliation graph model right agm affiliation graph model right so from affiliation graph model now i am moving to another you know extension of this which is called big clam right big clam is the actual algorithm right and big clam is a relaxed version of uh, the affiliation graph model right so here again the concept is same with a little change right and the change is last time what i mentioned that with every node we have a probability pa pb this is the belongingness probability right this pa pb also indicate that if two nodes belong to a community uh, what's the probability that two nodes are connected due to the community a, due to the community b and so on and this pa pb pa pb this uh, probabilities are independent of the vertices right meaning that all the nodes which are part of a community they have same membership equal membership now i am trying to make it flexible right what i'm saying is that i define a quantity call fua right and if you forget about pa pa pb is not there okay we define a new quantity fua fua is the membership strength of a particular node u to community a now i am i am forgetting about the community centric probability so this is basically a node centric node comma node comma community uh, you know uh, centric measure right for a particular u with respect to a particular a this is the membership of u to a similarly we have a membership of v for a membership of c uh, membership of other nodes to a and so on and so forth right so i am assigning a mem uh, uh, community membership to every node right with respect to a particular community if u if 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 f u a is zero that means that node uh, u is not a part of community a if this is one meaning that uh, uh, you know its membership strength is one if it is 0.5 meaning that its membership strength is 0.5 and so on. okay so now we again the define we define the same quantity the probability that two nodes are connected because of the community a right so the probability that two nodes a and b uh, two two nodes u and v are connected because of the community a is now defined in this way 1 minus exponential of minus f u a times f v a what is f u a f u a is a value a right? scalar value now f u a is the membership of u in community a and what is f v a a v a is a membership of v in community a it's a, a, both of them are scalar now think about it if both of them are very high if both of them are very high this product would be very high this product would be large Exp some uh, but, but but here is a minus so exponent of this exponent of minus of this large number will be very small because this is ultimately 1 by 1 by e to the power f u a times f v a right if this is very large right of course the denominator would be very large therefore the entire fraction would be low less small so 1 minus this would be very large so if both the nodes have very high membership probability membership value uh, to a particular community a right uh, right this would be very high if one is high one is less then we get a mediocre probability value right if both of them are very less both if you and if we are very less then then what would happen if this is very less this would be very high one minus this would be less then also this probability would be less so this is a beautiful property if both the memberships are high your probability would be high if one of them is low the probability would be mediocre if both of them are low this would be low the probability would be low and if one of them is zero say this is very high and this is zero what would happen so if so this would be one right one minus one it, it, it would be zero so if, if at least one node there are two nodes and you want to see whether two nodes are connected or not right you want to measure the probability of uh, of being an edge between u and v due to the community a if one node doesn't belong to the community the probability would be zero 
Now this is the beauty of this formula. Okay, so now we know how to calculate the probability of two nodes with respect to a particular community. Okay, so <clears throat> so I am trying to give you an idea of what is this F, right? I mentioned F. F is basically same as M, right? The membership matrix that I mentioned earlier. But here it's slightly different. The reason is that earlier, you know, when I mentioned that node, and I also mentioned right about M, which was basically node community matrix, and it was only one zero one zero something like this. Now, if is basically again a matrix node cross community matrix, and each element, each of the each element indicates the membership of this node to this community, and this is a value scalar value. Okay. Now this so 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 what is the meaning of F U for example so F U would be so this is the row U right now this is F U F U is a vector F U is a vector of community memberships across different community community strengths across different community okay so if I say that okay I know how to compute the probability between two nodes being a part of A. How to compute the probability of an edge between two nodes as a part of A? What is the total probability? Because now U and V can be part of multiple communities, right? What is the total probability that two nodes are connected? So the total probability that two nodes are connected, I will calculate in the same manner, the one that I mentioned earlier, the OR kind of function, right? So what is C? C is the uh, C is basically, you know, all the communities. C is all the communities, right? So for every C, we calculate one minus P C U V. Now we can calculate one uh, this, this P C U V using this formula. C is a community, right? We take all the communities. Now P C U V, right? Uh, we can we can easily calculate P C U V because we know that P C U V is basically what P C U V is this one. 1 minus exponential of f of uc times f of vc right so this is the formula this is the formula so let me rewrite so for 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 every pair of vertices u comma v one i i'll take 1 minus product of c all the communities c right i'm not looking at the shared communities because this is kind of a fuzzy fuzzy concept right i mean uh, a, a node a node is not a node is not a part of a community totally for every node community pair there is this membership strength uh, uh, value right therefore i am taking all the communities for all the communities right 1 minus pc u comma v right so this is again uh, the the same or kind of function that I mentioned earlier, okay. So if I unfold it, this is one minus, you know, product of C. Now I'm replacing P C by this formula. So this is one minus one minus exponential of, right? Um, exponential of minus F U C times F of V C, right? Therefore this would be one minus this and this will cancel out, right? And we have uh, so so now think about it. Product of all exponents, right? So this, this is basically you know it is basically saying that um, oh so this will be plus sorry yeah it is basically saying that it will be so so if we just consider this factor this and this right what is this product of exponential of some quantity right it means so this is essentially what e to the power a a times e to the power b and it will C and so on. So this is e to the power sum is e to the power a plus b plus c, right? So from product we get a sum, sum over exponent, right? Now think of this this sum, right? Sum of sum of c, f u c and f b c. What does it mean? In that bulky f matrix, right? This is your c, and this is one row u, this is one row v, and you are taking the Taking the dot product, right? So you are basically taking the dot product of this, this row and this row, right? So F U and F B, of course, transpose, right? So one minus exponential of this one. So this is the probability. Now probability of two nodes 
being connected. So let's look at the example, right? So this is your F matrix. Okay, this is your F matrix. So and and say this is your F U and this is F V. This is F W. There are two three nodes. So if you take this F U times F U times F V, basically you need to take this to uh, you know you take the dot product between two dot product will be point one six, right? So the probability of U V probability of uh, connecting uh, an edge between U V is zero point one four. Similarly. U W would be 0.88. You will see, and V W. If you do the same thing between V and W, we see that there is no shared common. There is no shared communities. Look, so this node B belongs to this community with some probability, but node W doesn't belong to this community. D doesn't belong to this community, but this belongs to. D doesn't belong to this community, but this belongs to. This belongs to the community, but this this doesn't belong to. So none of the community, none of these vertices share any common community. Therefore, this is zero. Okay, so so now what we know, think about it. What we know, we know how to calculate P U V. Okay, right now <coughs> we define the optimization function. So here the optimization function is <coughs> maximum likelihood function estimate. What is our task now? our task is to learn this bulky f matrix because we do not know we do not know which node belongs to which community we do not know which node belong which uh, which node has membership to which community so this f matrix we need to learn right so now the task is to find this f matrix which maximizes the likelihood and how do we calculate the likelihood we calculate the likelihood that for those edges Which actually exist in the graph because we know the graph very well. We know G, we know V comma E. We know all the edges, right? For those edges which actually exist, we take P of U V. For those edges we which do not exist, which take one minus P of uh, P of U V because one minus P of U V is what this is the this is the penalty or whatever. This is the penalty. So one minus this. One minus this should be the reward, right? Now think of cases. So if 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 a particular edge exists, if a particular edge U V actually exists, right? And your your model says that the probability is also high. That means this quantity would be very high. This quantity would be very high because this is high, right? But if a particular edge does not exist, but still your model says that this is very high, what would happen? Still, your model says that this is very high. Therefore, only this part would be would be considered because the edge doesn't exist. So this part would be considered. This part would not be considered, right? Now, in this part, I am saying that the edge doesn't exist, but your model says that the probability is very high. That means this would be very high. If this would be high, one minus this would be low, right? One minus this would be low. If, if so, so one minus this part, this actually contributes to the function, right? The total optimization function, likelihood function, right? And our task is to maximize this. So, if your probability, if your model says that for a non-existent edge the probability is high, so that would be bad for your function. Now, if a non-existing edge your model says that the probability is low, therefore one minus this would be high, therefore that is good for your model. Okay. so ultimately your task would be to maximize this likelihood so that uh, so, so maximize the likelihood so in order to maximize the likelihood what's your parameter the parameter is f so as usual we don't we we, we basically uh, you know instead of taking the likelihood we take the log likelihood we take the log of this two and then we calculate so ultimately our task is we take the log log of this maximum likelihood function so this is this this basically boy if if you unfold puv in terms of you know uh, in terms of this one right so ultimately your uh, optimization function would look like this okay now how do we do that how do you optimize it now this is our optimization function log likelihood how do we do this we assume that this is a continuous optimization function right and and as you again we assume that this is some 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 something like a convex function and we we take the derivative with respect to uh, fu right so if we take the derivative of this 
with respect to FU, you see here, right? Um, uh, so this is log, so one my derivative of log with respect to FU, this would be one minus this plus exponential of this plus this one. Okay. So when we, we, we basically take the derivative, we then, even, you know, we update, we, we take the derivative as usual, we do in case of gradient, gradient descent or gradient ascent, right? Uh, we, we update the value because this is, this is arg max, right? So we are maximizing it. So we, we need to take gradient ascent. So we start with an initial value of a few, right? We take, start an initial value, start with an initial value of a few, uh, if, and then we keep on updating the values of if based on the gradient, right? And we converge when we see that there is no further update. A straightforward gradient descent, gradient ascent kind of method. Okay. So when we get if, if matrix through this iteration, we will finally we learn this if matrix, right? So when we learn the if matrix, we are done because if matrix contains all the information that which node belongs to which community with which, with how much of community membership value, right? So now we say that, okay, node U belongs to community C, community C1 with membership 0.2, with community C2 with membership 0.5 and so on and so forth, right? And then you, you, can, you can take a threshold, you can say that, okay, I, I take a threshold of 0.8. So if a, if a node belongs to a community with greater than 0.8 community membership, then you assign it, otherwise not. So therefore, we get an overlapping community structure at the end of it. So the task here is to learn the matrix F. Okay, I hope you understood this part. Okay, so now we discussed uh, uh, evaluation matrix, right? How how do we evaluate a community structure? So when we talk about evaluation, right, we assume that we know the ground truth community, right? So what do you mean by ground truth community? Let's, let's assume that you know, uh, in a real world network like Facebook network, you already know that this, these are the communities which, uh, which, are, which exist. For example, say, you know, users generally create different fan clubs, right? B different kind of groups, right? Online groups, and then uh, users invite other users to be a part of that group. Other users, uh, you know, automatically join those groups and so on. So these are naturally created groups, right? Or communities. So the task of an algorithm would be to detect such communities which are naturally created, right? So let's take, uh, let's, let's consider that we have a Facebook network and we also know that, uh, we also know that, the, uh, that, that these are the natural communities, natural groups, right? Our task would be to detect these groups automatically, okay? And how do we evaluate it? We evaluate, uh, you know, community structure based on <clears throat> the matrix that we use uh, for cluster evaluation, right? In data mining, when you talk about clustering, like clustering approaches like k-means, k, -means, k -doid, et cetera, uh, how do you evaluate? So you also assume that there are ground truth clusters and uh, you have some detected clusters and how similar these two clusters are, right? And the matrix that we generally use include uh, uh, something called purity, rand index, normalized, uh, normalized mutual information and so on. Right, so I will try to briefly go through these matrix and not, uh, you know, uh, not elaborate them properly because these are very well-known matrix. So you can uh, you can go back and check either the book or you know there are many online materials available. So given a graph G, let's assume that C is this community structure, meaning there are uh, C1, C2, dot dot dot, CK, uh, K number of ground truth communities, right, and let's assume that you have omega one, omega two, these are the detected communities. You have J detected communities and K ground truth communities, right? So as you see here in this particular example, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 nodes, right? And these circles, circles indicate the detected communities. So these five nodes, for example, these five nodes uh, are you know clubbed together. Uh, similarly, these five nodes are clubbed together by the algorithm and so on. And these colors, the shades, right? Black, the shade, dotted shade, you know, uh, this line shade, the shades indicate the ground truth community. Meaning in the ground truth, these three black, uh, these four black nodes should be grouped together. 
in the ground truth they are grouped together right they belong to the same class for example similarly these three belong to the same class this four belong to the same class similarly this uh, five four five six seven eight these eight nodes belong to the same class okay therefore you know the algorithm has 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 made some mistakes right so what uh, how how do you compute the mistake for example for this community the mistake can be computed in two ways either i can say that okay the mistake happened because because of the black black nodes all these four nodes all the four black nodes are part of the community they are, and because of there's a mistake happens or you can say that okay the mistake happens because of this node okay so it is it is easier to say that for this com uh, detected community the mistake happens because of this node right because the majority of the nodes belong to the black community right and this is kind of an outlier so the mistake is proportional to this this particular node similarly here for this cluster right you basically say that okay the mistake happens because of the minority nodes minority nodes are again this type right for this node for this cluster the mistake happens because of this node so what we are basically uh, considering for every detected community we are considering the number of nodes belonging to the majority ground truth class right so this is purity so for every detected community every detected community i take the majority majority node majority ground truth community as the true community right as the correct uh, classification whereas the minority ground truth community as the wrong classification so for this one the error is one for this community the error is two for this community the error is one okay so what's the total error total error is 1 plus 2 plus 1 and it is divided by the number of vertices present here how many vertices 16 right 1 2 3 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so this is the purity okay so this is this is not the purity this is basically the error and the purity would be 1 minus this or you can you can basically measure in the in the other way so you can say that okay purity for this cluster is the the rightly classified samples which is 4 by uh i mean which is 4 in this case this is 3 and this case this is 5 so the purity is 4 plus 3 plus 5 by 16 right so 1 minus this one or this one this is purity what is the problem in this purity matrix the problem in this purity matrix is that if you assign say you you have an algorithm and the algorithm says that let's uh, let's assign each node to an individual community so there this is a community this is a community this is a community this is a community this is also community so number of communities equal to number of nodes what would the purity value purity value would be 1 maximum because for every no for every detected community there is only one ground truth community which is correct right so if you have a very trivial algorithm for community detection that would also give you a purity of 1 and that's a problem that's a problem in order to address this problem right uh, another metric was proposed which is called mutual information right uh, so what is mutual information mutual information between a detected community and the so this is the detected community structure and this is the ground truth community structure right and how do we measure it so for every detected community and every uh, every uh, ground truth community we basically you know take the intersection meaning that uh, that for every ground truth community how many of them are part of the part of the part of the detected community and and, th and then this is normalized by n okay so this is this is Uh, so it is basically a normal mutual information kind of formula right <clears throat> and then we have log of n times uh, n is the number of nodes right times the same quantity by the size of the uh, uh, detected community and the size of the ground truth community right so this is mutual information but if you think of it if you go back and you know uh, take an example where you again assign each node to a community separate separate community right you will see that the mutual information value would be highest 
same as purity. Okay, then then what's the difference? This is also bad. To address this, we proposed we basically use something called normalized mutual information. So instead of taking only the mutual information, we then normalize it by the entropy of the detected community and the ground truth community. And we we know how to compute the entropy. This is Shannon's entropy. Okay, minus pi log pi. So pi is basically the size of the community. Uh, you know the, the 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 fraction of the size of the community, and you have pi log pi, right? So this you compute it for this and for detected and the ground truth community. You see, if you do it, if you uh, then you know, uh, then your uh, when you when you trivially assign nodes to individual communities, right? Because of this normalization factor, this normalization factor will basically penalize uh, that kind of triviality. Because this would be very very high in that case. If this would be very very high, then uh, you know then then the resultant value would be low. Okay, you you can go back and check. You take an example, and uh, you uh, you know see whether it is really correct. So now I am discussing another metric, which is called Rand index. Okay. So purity and purity has a problem, and uh, mutual information has the same problem. Normalized mutual information actually overcome this problem. Normalized mutual information is called NMI. NMI basically overcomes this problem. Now, Rand index is is built on a separate idea, right? In Rand index, the idea is that let's assume there are four quantities. One is called true positive. In the classification, uh, normal classification, we we basically you know uh, create this confusion matrix and then true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. Here also the idea is same. Right in Rand index, we also compute these four quantities. Let's look at these quantities. True positive. True positive means you take a, so you you need to compute these quantities based on all pairs of nodes. Right. You take a pair of nodes. Right. And you know the ground truth communities of the, of these pairs. You also know the detected communities of these pairs. If both the nodes belong to the same Ground truth community, as well as same detected community, that means it's a true positive case, right? If both the nodes belong to same ground truth community, but do not belong to same uh, same uh, detected community, then what would happen? If the pair of nodes belong to the same ground truth community, right? But they do not belong to the same detected community meaning according to the detection according to the detection this should be a negative sample right this should not be together according to the detection but according to the ground truth this is false according to the ground truth they should be in the same community right so this is false negative your algorithm says that this is negative but your ground truth says that no this is this is false right we know what is false negative what is true negative you true negative you take a pair of nodes the pair of nodes do not belong to the same community do not belong to the same ground truth community therefore this is true negative your algorithm also says that th these two these two nodes should be separated so ground truth also says that these two nodes should be separated so true uh, true negative false positive pair of nodes right belong to the same detected community but according to the ground truth they should not be together so your result says that this is positive but your ground truth says that this is false this is false positive so now what's the accuracy accuracy uh, how do you measure the accuracy is basically accuracy how do you measure the accuracy you measure the accuracy based on you take the true positive and and true negative these are your correct classification so true positive plus true negative by true positive true negative false positive false negative Okay, in the book there's an example, right? And uh, hopefully you'll be able to understand, you know, uh, this example because true it, it's very easy. I mean, to to calculate true positive, true negative, you just look at the colors and circles, and you easily detect it. You can easily measure it. Okay, so uh, this brings us to the end of this chapter.
uh, this was one of the longest chapters in the book i hope you uh, you have understood this chapter okay thanks <laughs>